Hello players and welcome to the top 32 cut of the European Yu-Gi-Oh 2014 Championships. Uh, today we have Dale Hawks versus Dennis Borgman, uh, that's from the UK and Germany respectively. Uh, now looking at it, Dale is playing a Bujin deck uh, again, something that I was hoping to see a lot more of, so uh, it's going to be nice to see all of the Yamato plays. And also we've got Dennis playing Light Swarm. Yes, that is correct. So. Um, it should be an interesting match. Uh, you've got two light decks facing off against each other. One that wants to play lots of scary monsters, and the other one that wants to play just one very, very powerful monster. One very scary monster. Yeah, so we'll see how the match actually plays out. The uh, Kaiser Colosseum, which may be being played by the Bujin, could be a major, major deciding factor uh, for the Light Swan to, of locking the Light Swan player out of all of their plays. Definitely. I mean, if they've overlooked that card, then they're probably going to have a hard time Oh, you've, you've got you've got main deck answers, but it causes you yes. to jump through hoops. And if you're taking time off jumping through hoops, you're probably being hit in the face, or you're at life points and direct attacks. Yes, yeah, not not your actual face. No, yeah, no, we if don't. If your opponent attack, actually attacks your face, do call a judge. Yeah, that's not that's not that's not that's cool. not all. Uh, a lot of you are asking for the what deck. Unfortunately, we decided to not feature that one this round because he's playing Joe Van Roberts, of which you just saw. So yeah, we'll try if he wins against Joe Van Roberts, uh, we'll try and get him up on the stream. Uh, afterwards, uh, I think we're, we're just getting the hands together over on the table. Correct. So I yeah, just having a little bit of a started. thing with my mic. Yeah, you can hear me fine, yes, right? I can hear you. Fine. Yeah, okay, that's fine. I'm good. Yes. Yeah. How do you guys think uh, Light Swan versus Bujin matchup goes? It's probably a joke about that being over quickly, but Light Swan running out of cards and Bujin. Nah, I've got nothing. <laughs> I've actually got nothing for that one. Well, that was a... It was an attempt. So it was an attempt, but there's... there's well, the Dragon Knight and Amulet's Dragon. Very popular cards from the uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! anime Waking the Dragons series, as it was called in English. If it's called something different where you're from, I do apologise, but this is this is uh, what we have. Is that shuffling? B shuffling? Oh, oh, and then he's going around a bit more. Sorry. I will mention that I also own that bandana. Oh, you do? You just have... You just have that. The bandana and the shuffle. Yes. Are you sure that's not you over there? Who am I talking to? I, d I don't actually do any sort of fancy shuffle. It's because I'm such a laid back guy. It's because you're busy looking at everybody else shuffling. <laughs> Probably. Just just chucking your cards everywhere. It's like, oh, no, oh, oh no, my cards are all over the floor, but at least you've got a nice shuffle, so it's all okay. Oh, you don't know what I'm playing, I'll right? be honest with you, that shuffle was so nice, I'd just give up. That's <laughs> how that works. It just... That you, sir, have the nicest shuffle. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Okay, so here comes a die roll. Three versus two. Dale takes the win. Yeah, it, both of these players are three wins away from making the final four. Um, and they're being told to keep their fields uh, corrected. That's something that's very important at the moment, um, is that players have their field laid out as in the same way that the game mat is. Uh, will become particularly more important later on uh, when we start adding new zones to your game maps in the future. You'll understand it all. Okay, so Bujin Yamato, Dimensional Prison, uh, Fire Formation Tenki, Fire Formation Tenki number two, uh, another Bujin monster, and Forbidden Lance. I can't make out what the... Um, I'm not quite sure either. I can't quite see it. I think Again, it might be craning our, our heads. I think so. it's pronounced Arasuda, but I can't remember. Arasuda? Maybe. Oh, there we go. Uh, it's actually a missing file. <laughs> You're missing card as well. Right, uh, we'll, uh, we'll see when we see the uh, card artwork. Sure. Yeah, I know it's got 1600 attack, Aaron, 1900 light defense, one. light, beast warrior, Bujin. So we could find it, but many of nice you Bujin players are probably throwing your arms in the hair, Aaron, we're sorry. Oh, two, uh, we've got two soul charges uh, with this light one star of Lila, Gareth, Aaron, two soul charges. And uh, we got the thumbs up. I'm ready. I'm ready, he says. So, let's see how Dell starts this match. Fire Formation Tenki coming down. Uh, I was just going to add Bujin uh, Mikazuki to his hand. Turn one, Bujin Yamato. Oh, no, I actually think that that was a... Uh, two face down cards, and Bujin Yamato going to activate... What will he send to his graveyard? Typically a Bujin hair. 
Yep, and there there's the hair. For Gingy hair, sorry. Oh, we might get our joke in today. I just remember. Maybe, but we'll we'll, we'll save it. <laughs> After all this build up, it's never going to be worth it. Let's leave it. Let's leave it. All right. It's a secret to everyone. Until it happens. He did he just draw a third soul charge? Yeah. That's wow. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's uh. He's he's just gonna keep that keep that one a little quiet there. Um. Targeting that face down there. Yeah. Lila. He's going to chain the Forbidden Lands to uh, protect the Bujin Yamato from any kind of spell or traps. The Lila is going to defense mode, so she won't be able to attack uh, over that. And there's even a Dimensional Prison as additional backup should Dennis find a way to commit more cards to the table. So he doesn't. He ends his turn and he sends a Rainbow Karibo, Eclipse Wyvern, and a Solar Recharge. That Rainbow Karibo is... Wow, we're seeing this in the top 32. In the main deck, I might add, of the Light Swan deck. I really I really like Rainbow Karibo. First of all, it's a Karibo. Second of all, it's, it's made of rainbows. And it's a really good card. The Eclipse Wyvern is going to banish the Judgment Dragon. Probably going to see the Dragon Rulers again uh, in this Light Swan deck. Bujin Flyer draws up Forbidden Lands. Three soul charges. One currently set on the field in case you're curious about the field. Uh, what's on the field? That's Bujin Hirume. Just having a quick read of uh, that one. When a Bujin monster is Banished. Oh, well, I can just bring that up for you there, guys. If you are watching in HD, you should be able to read that. But again, if you are in HD and you're struggling to read that, uh, please let us know. Unless, of course, you're watching this on a phone, in which case it might be a bit too small anyway. But let us know either way. Bujin Yamato going in for the attack on Lila. That's going to send it to the graveyard. And Bujin Mikizuki. Michizuki. This card, uh, yeah, Mikazuki, uh, is going to attack directly, and that's going to be 1,900 points of damage. I think this free lights one, uh, sorry, free soul charge hand for Dennis is really setting him back. He's not started with solar recharge, charge of the light brigade, um, many of his cards to get e to get started. It could pay off if he uh, gets uh, set up. Oh. There's a turtle. So we've got Bujin Hare and Bujin, tur Bujin Turtle in the graveyard. Just a uh, hair just just behind the turtle. Yeah, of course. Because he went for a nap, I believe. Yeah. Yes. Got it, finally. We finally got that. And out. you guys didn't even see that coming. No. So every time you're, you're playing against a Bujin player, I do encourage you to make uh, Tortoise and the Hare references to them. Yeah, it appears to be some sort of uh, error in communication there. Okay, let's uh, see what's happening. Is there another fire formation tanky? The judge is coming over. Not sure what's uh, what's happening here. Okay, well, that seems to be resolved pretty quickly. Yeah, the issue's uh, sorted. Uh, Dennis is drawing a new card. It's not going to be the fourth soul charge, don't worry. I'm sure they would be having a <laughs> slightly different discussion if that was the fourth soul charge. It's, I can't tell you what that card is, unfortunately. So let's uh, take a look over at Dell's field. So this is uh, what he's playing into. Oh, it is a, a Rainbow Karibo. It's a second one, so he's actually playing two Rainbow Karibos in his main deck. Wow. And there's the first Soul Charge. Soul Charge number one for Lila. Uh, only a single single activation. He can't really afford to do much more. Uh, he can, but he, he's just got no plays he can really make. So he's considering his options. He's targeting his face down. 
And it's a footman in the lance that he targets. Uh, Gareth coming down. This creates a really interesting situation. Uh, he's got another soul char two soul charges in hand. Okay. He can't afford to take the time to do this, so he goes for the Evil Swarm and makes Sychon Knight. This is a very powerful extra deck monster. Unfortunately, I uh, it's a very, uh, I can't bring this up. Excitian monster. <laughs> okay, so this will destroy all cards controlled by Dale. Uh, he will use that uh, Bujinji Hair to protect his Bujin Yamato. Which I think he's fine with. Uh, yeah, uh, did you see what the, the Forbidden Lance wasn't chained to anything, was it? I didn't... Yeah, he's being told to uh, keep his Spanish cards not in the middle of the table, just in case there's confusion of what's in play and what's not in play. And here is, of course, this turn that he can't be destroyed. Uh, it's Bujin Crane drawn. There's Bujin Carnation, uh, Bujin Harume, and Bujinji Crane in Dell's hand right now. Um, just in case you guys don't see enough of this card against your Bujin local players, you can see how nasty this one is. Okay, it's Bujin Harumi, and he's banishing a uh, Bujin monster from his graveyard to special summon the Harumi. And when that happens, he's allowed to special summon Bujin Arazuda, I believe. Again, if I'm pronouncing that room wrong, I apologize. Uh, you can find that in the public card database under Bujin 1600 attack, 1900 defense, light beast warrior, if you need to, some filtering information. Okay, so he's still got that uh, turtle. Slow and slow and steady winning the race. Uh, where do we go with an Exe summon? There's a lot of choices. He's considering it. I know Ark would be a good. You know, if he enters his battle phase, uh, the Excision Knight. Uh, hold on. I know Ark's probably going to be a one, good two, choice. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. He can't actually use the Excision Knight. He can't. But no, they control the same number of cards. Is that three? Three. <laughs> Here's a card we don't see very often. Which is why he has to read it. Yes, I will call that one up for you as soon as I can. If it's uh, Bujinji Ama yes. Amatazu. Uh, it's a one of the giant cards for this weekend if you're in the public events. Very, very powerful card and we don't see it put in play very much. So I'm very happy to see this in the top 32 being summoned. And he's, it's, not, it's not even the end of Dell's uh, Rampage. Uh, there's a Susanna. Yeah, Bujin Susanna. Detaching another uh, hair. A uh, Bujin G hair. Yeah, as we said, yeah, we were talking about yesterday, you normally see one big Bujin monster on the field uh, against your opponent's Ooh. many monsters. Uh, Dale turning that on its head by just summoning lots of really big. Uh, Bujin T monsters. Uh, Bujin Ki, Bujin Ki for uh, Amateur Zoo. There's another Bujin Harum. He's got the Bujin Carnation in his hand in case something goes wrong here. And he's uh, limited his cards that are on the field by making those XT summons. Two, three, four. Yeah, he's lowered his number of cards so the Excitial Knight can't be used. And Dennis is not looking good. He's losing his monster. In fact, I could say this is probably probably game, is it not? 24 and 20. Yeah, that's 5,000. There's the Rainbow Rebos. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Can I just read that for a moment, please? <laughs> it's like, this is what? <laughs> his lifeline... Uh, yeah, his lifeline preserved. He had the Bujin... Uh, sorry, he had the Rainbow Rebo in his hand, which stops the Bujin monster attacking uh, as long as it's on the field, and then he can special summon a... Rainbow Kribo from his graveyard uh, when his opponent declares an attack it's just banishes uh, if it's special summon this way so what would have been a game winning sh attack coming from Dale completely stopped um, and rather taking any more life point damage he knows he's got those uh, soul charges in his hand and he needs every life point he can get here very well defended by uh, Dennis Unfortunately, I don't think that he's uh, really got the the uh, 
the ability to be able to come out of this. It's a scary field to be facing, especially when there's uh, we know there's a Bujinji Hare and a Bujinji Turtle uh, in the opposing group. There's Light Raid Diablos being drawn. Uh, this card seems to get a lot of attention recently. Uh, when we first released uh, Light Raid Diablos, uh, there was not uh, a lot of uh, feedback for that, but now people seem very happy to play this card. It's also just another very big monster. Oh, there's actually something wrong with the image. Uh, it is not a two-star monster, guys. Sorry about that. That is uh, a lot higher. Just mark that on the list of things. So in case you're watching, Dellsfield currently looks like this. Uh, Which is huge. Yeah. The Rainbow Creeper, I think, is attached to... Uh, equipped to the Bujinki Amaterasu. Is that how you say it? Amaratu. Amaratu, sorry. Amaterasu. You see, you've got it right. Yeah. Amaterasu. Bujinki Susano. Bujin Harume. Yep. Okay, Dennis checking the grave. Are very important to know what your opponent can... Uh, pull out when you're trying to commit to a play so Dennis has created an opportunity for himself he just needs to make the most of it so soul charge they they'll let's like go summons back two monsters in defense mode let's say Lila light sworn sorceress and Gareth Another lights one warrior. Draw lots of cards with uh, Gareth there. What's Dennis gonna do? He's only got 2,800 life points left. His opponent can attack all monsters. Uh, Dennis can, Dale can attack all monsters. Dennis controls with his Bujin Susanano. Susanano, which I think is a. Uh, what Dennis is just realising there. Yeah. Okay. He sets a monster, and he's gonna he's gonna try and draw some additional cards from the Gareth. Um, so he actually sends a Eclipse Wife into the graveyard, which will allow him to banish his second Judgment Dragon. And uh, Garrus Effect will send the top two. Uh, and in response, uh, Dale activates uh, his Bujin Amaretu uh, to... I have to bring this up because it has to do different effects depending on whose turn it's being used in. And it's currently being used in Dennis's turn. Uh, we don't see this card very often. Uh, he's targeted one of his banished level four monsters and he's added it to his hand. It's the Bujinji Crane. Mm -hmm going to make battle very difficult for Dennis. Louis thinking there's a rather large defense face down there. Got a Bujin Carnation, Bujinji Crane and a Book of Moon in Dell's hand. Okay, we're seeing uh, another XE material detached by Dell. And he's sending a card to his graveyard. Unfortunately, I think it's ah, yeah, it's the Bujin, um, Bujinti. It's I, um, I forget its name. It's uh, it destroys a card that your opponent controls. Face up card. Pretty sure it's Bujinti Quillin. Yeah, Quillin. That'll be it. Uh, it destroys uh, face up card. So he uses it to destroy the Rainbow Rebo, which will allow his uh, Bujinki to attack. Just to a. Uh, I think it's a uh, Bujin sword horse face. It's a horse with a sword instead of a face. Ah, oh, that clears that up for me. Yeah, just thought. So, yeah, here we're going to see the uh, the Bujin Susanawa going, just taking everything out. And 
I think Dell's that's trying to close this game out. Yeah, he's gonna. That's Bujinji Crane. He's gonna force out the Rainbow Karibo and Graveyard, and then Dell's just gonna be able to attack straight past that and wipe out the rest of Dennis' his so, life points. So that is another 2-0 by the look of it. Uh, is that game one or game two? That was just game one. You sure? They put that uh, green dot there very, very quickly. Yeah, game it's one. just game one. Oh. I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, we're getting very excited to see who's going to be our four representatives. It's literally top 32, 16, 8. And then you're looking at the, the, the most... People that for going. these guys, it'll be the most important match of the weekend is that top four. Getting into that top four. So your eight final players are going to be very, very high stakes. Extremely. Because you want to go to Rimini. Rimini is... We've got a lot of interesting plans for it. It's going to be fantastic. And it's a lovely place. Oh, yeah. This, this time of year, fantastic place. Okay, so we're going to see a bit of side decking uh, here. We saw a lot of uh, aggressive uh, Bujin plays there. We very rarely see the um, Bujinki coming out. And it put some work in there. And we saw multiple Exes monsters and Bujin attacking. Normally, you get the Kaiser Colosseum, Bujin Yamato just slow rolling your opponent to get all of the cards that you need ah okay so the, uh, Dennis came prepared is this Dennis we're looking at here or is this Dell I think this is Dell actually we're looking yeah at. this is Dell we're looking at here okay Del, yeah Dell's including um, uh, the Ally of Justice it's a card I'm not familiar with but you can discard it from your hand to banish two light monsters from your opponent's graveyard and the lights it's great against Bujins because you can take out the, the tortoise and the hare or Bujinji turtle and Bujinji hare uh, and against Light Sworn he's going to be using it to remove his opponent's monsters in response to those Lumina activations and also to deny Dennis the opportunity to use uh, to summon Judgment Dragon which since it's not a once per turn effect you can just keep paying life points until uh, Dale runs out of ways to stop him from destroying all cards he controls we're going to see a Light Ray Diablos being removed. A Soul Charge. Second Soul Charge. I think uh, drawing he's three. feeling a little <laughs> sore after drawing those three Soul Charges. No, that was that was rough. Uh, a rough beginning. He didn't get set up. And then from his first um, activation of a Light Swarm monster, he sends char uh, the Solar Recharge to the graveyard, which would have been a great card for him to start off with instead of one of those Soul Charges. It'll let him get start getting the ball rolling a lot faster. Okay, so we're seeing some uh, free sleeving from the side deck. Oh, well, there's an interesting technique with this: is it stops you accidentally starting your next round with the cards that you had from the previous round sided in because you won't have those side deck cards sleeved up. Yeah. You go, oh yeah, of course, uh, this this isn't right. Is or, or just randomly ending up with an extra card in your deck by accident. And it does happen. Some players forget to uh, take their cards back out of their deck properly and it causes problems and it does come with penalties. So try to be as careful as you can to make sure that your deck matches your deck list as you submitted it. Definitely. We'll see how Dell decides to... We'll, we'll see how Dennis decides to uh, play this game. He didn't really get to his Light Sworn... Um, Less one combos that he was hoping to, and Dale just seemed to just have everything. Those two far formation tankies at the start of the game, giving him a lot of access to cards to his monsters. Right. Oh, no, nope, still not done side decking. He's uh, shuffled up and is just making some last minute alterations. Right. There's those Kaiser Coliseums that you said would uh, be a problem. Yeah, I can see uh, you guys in the stream uh, profusely mocking me for my pronunciation of uh, Amateretu, and I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I, will, I will work on that. In fact, you even said it correctly the first time. And That's uh, the weirdest thing, but then I went forgot. Downhill. I just, I just forgot how to say things right. <laughs> That's fortunately never happened to me in an interview. So why are you here? I words. <laughs> Just imagine how that would go. Thank you for your time, Mr. Bell. Okay, we're coming up to the uh, final cut of the deck, and then we're going to be seeing uh, both players drawing their hands, and I will let you know what we have 
as soon as possible. I'm not sure what our technical guy's asking. Maybe for him to remove the empty sleeves from the table. Two Needlebook Nests, a Judgment Dragon, a Charge of the Light Brigade, one unknown card, and Breakthrough Skill um, appearing in Dennis's hand. Those two Needlebook Nests are going to be able to let him send 10 cards from his deck to the graveyard. Uh, which will get those Judgment Dragons going very soon. And we're seeing a Bujin Yamato start from Dale, Fiendish Chain. Bujin Carnation, Bujin Arazuda, and Mystical Space Typhoon. And we got a Raiden. That was the card I was missing. Uh, Charge the Light Brigade coming down for Dennis. That's looking a lot better. He's going to activate Eclipse Wyvern's effect uh, after he searches for a Light Swan monster. There was a time when you could play three of these. I imagine many of you don't remember that too fondly. Okay, go, go for the turn one uh, Raikou, the Light Spawn Hunter. And uh, banishes the Judgment Dragon. Okay, we're going to see some face-down cards and a face-down monster, Raikou. Uh, leaving him with two cards in hand. Kaiser Colosseum, uh, first card uh, drawn for Dale. And he's going to summon the Bujin Yamato, the dreaded start. Uh, Bujin always wants to start Yamato where possible. And, and Kaiser Colosseum. Either. Although, saying that, he knows that his opponent's got a face-down Raikou, so he's deciding to not attack. Is the Needlebook Nest. Mm -hmm. And that's going to send an Eclipse Wyvern into the graveyard, so he's going to get another effect there. So, he's got, he's got a Redox uh, Dragon in his graveyard, so he can banish both of those Eclipse Wyverns and get two Judgment Dragons to his hand. Oh, he's got a... Sorry, a Judgment Dragon in hand, one Banish, and a Light Raid Diablos. So he could just storm the field with a flurry of special summons. Unfortunately, there is that Kaiser Colosseum there that's stopping him doing that. Yes, uh, well that's what he's hoping the Raikou's going to answer. And Dale didn't want to attack straight into that Raikou and risk losing his Bujin Yamato, but now that's going to be the prime target for the Raikou Light Swan Hunter, I expect. Uh, perhaps Dennis has something, something more sinister in mind. His opponent. Sinister? Yeah, I like the word. You like the word sinister? Yeah, I think we should use it more often in conversation. Yes. But not in a sinister way. Well played. Okay, we're going to see another Eclipse Wyvern. That's three Eclipse Wyverns that are, uh, are going off. And he has to reveal his deck to his opponent because he no longer has any monsters that he can uh, banish from his deck. So, Dell, knowing the Light Swan deck from his playtesting, because obviously. Sorry, I say obviously I shouldn't. Um, from all of his playtesting is probably very aware of what Dennis has. He takes a quick look and can probably figure out what's uh, face down on on Dennis's side of the field. He's probably more importantly looking for the number of Judgment Dragons where, where they are, so he can figure out if his opponent has a Judgment Dragon in his hand. Is that Rainbow Karibo in hand as well? Yeah. For, for Light Swan, you're looking for uh, very particular things. Okay, so we're seeing a uh, Raikou has been flipped, and there's a Fiendish Chain. Best card in the game. Best card in the game. Well, one of one of the best cards in the game. Yeah, pretty much it is. There, there'll it always be a fiendish chain to stop you.
Okay, we're going to see a uh, Bujin, uh, Bujinji turtle going to the graveyard of uh, Dale. That redox uh, in the graveyard constantly threatening all of those banished dragons sitting out of play for Dennis. And Dennis just needs to find a way to get that Kaiser Coliseum off the table and he will be able to... <laughs> and there's a second Kaiser Coliseum. So even if he does have the answer, he has to take that window immediately. Uh, Dale may be aware of this and may just preemptively activate the second Kaiser Coliseum. Dennis just needs one window and he can close the game out right away. He elects to not attack the Raikou. Ah, because he doesn't want to remove uh, Raikou from his opponent's side of the field. Because Raikou is preventing Dennis from summoning any monsters. And if he takes that off the field, he gives his opponent the opportunity to summon a Judgment Dragon, of which he has no answer for, and it can clean the field out than Redox. So, Dale actually in a much stronger position, not attacking. So... There's a breakthrough skill. Uh, Dell is sorry. Dennis is going to be sitting around looking for an answer for that Kaiser Colosseum. We see a solemn warning drawn from Dale, and he sets that onto the field. And he's just uh, using that Bujin Yamato to set him up in for the uh, for the late game here. A new card is drawn. Uh, it's Rainbow Creepo, I believe. I have a couple of uh, unfortunate errors, uh, so I can't tell you what um, what exactly is in Dennis's hand. And he's keeping that uh, a closely guarded secret on the table. Okay, Pot of Duality is played, uh, revealing another Pot of Duality and the Alloy of Justice card that we were referring to earlier. Okay, he's going straight to the end phase as well off of that uh, to send a Virginji Hare to the graveyard. And Dennis is in a really horrible position because he can see exactly what he wants to do and his, that Kaiser Coliseum is totally shutting him down. Well, Dell, uh, Dell also not able to get any damage in. It's a bit of a standoff. He knows if he takes a single monster out of play, he risks losing everything because he... If that Kaiser Coliseum goes down. Okay, Rainbow Kribo is discarded by Dennis. Uh, I believe because he has too many cards in his hand. Yes, one, two, three, four, five, six. Worst way to lose cards is just simply not playing them. Del passes play. He might just sit here and let him run out of cards. Yeah, he could do that. I mean, he is playing Light Swarm. Yeah, but he's been sending a lot of cards with the Bridging Yamato, so. He's already sent 15 cards to his graveyard. Have you been counting? Well, there's Raikou, and then he did two Needle on the nest. Oh, so we know it's been at least, yeah, it's been at least 15 cards. At least cards. 15 cards that's been discarded. Fair play. Fair play to you, sir. Uh, Bujinji Crane is uh, currently in Dell's hand, and uh, Bujin Carnation. This card again. Oh, we discarded the second card's Colosseum. Maybe not the best for him. Well, he knows if um, he's got two options. He can activate it, which would then prevent him playing any more spells or traps. Uh, or he could just um, not play it. If Dennis gets a window, he is going to push as hard as he can. He's got all these cards he can't play. And he's now just sitting around waiting for an answer to the Kaiser Coliseum. Uh, he's got no answer, so he just discards a card for the end of his turn. Ah, it's uh, Minerva he's discarding, and he's asking, does he get to use the effect to send the top card of his deck to the graveyard. Dale could just sit... Yeah, let's look at the size of the decks there on the table. Dale could just sit there and sit sit him out playing you ca and you cannot do anything. Well, we're in an age of 3MST. Uh, yeah, I don't know how many of those are in the graveyard. Uh, I've seen from one. Yeah. I, Dale needs to make sure that he still has an answer to um, his opponent should he get rid of the Kaiser Coliseum. But until Dennis gets an answer, it's a complete stomach. He's got oh, a third Kaiser Coliseum. I think he's discarding it to uh, 
And as we said at right, the start, safe, yeah, as we said at the start, it was going to be a big deciding factor would be Kaiser policy. Okay, so he's using the Ally of Justice card. I forget that card's name. Please uh, feel free to look that up in a database. I can see there it's a level three dark Ally of Catastor. You can discard it to banish two light monsters from your opponent's graveyard. So he goes and takes out the Minerva and something else, most likely. Probably not an Eclipse wave, Wyvern. I wouldn't want to give his opponent any of those scary dragons. Uh, Black Horn of Heaven in Dell's hand now, from what I can see. Uh, we've got a. Okay. This guy's Black Horn of Heaven. I just see this as two guys running it, running towards each other very slowly. Like, yeah. Because ah! they're both waiting for something to happen. It's like, who blinks first? Or in this case, does Dennis draw an answer to Kaiser Corsair? Which is slightly less dramatic in real world context. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Bujin Harume being drawn by uh, Dell. Kaiser Colosseum. Nanti discards the Kaiser Colosseum. Yep, that's uh, okay. There's one Kaiser Colosseum stand between Dell and his life points. But there's a solemn sort of warning face down, so even if. Um, Dennis finds a way to get the Judgment Dragon through. There is a solemn warning to stop him. Perhaps he's playing Celestia. Celestia would be a really good card to play right now because yeah, it would force the activation cool. of Solemn Warning. That looks like there's uh, 10 cards maybe less in that deck now. Yeah. Just having a count, actually. You can catch that. There's also uh, Bujinji Hair, multiple Bujinji Hairs. He's to the point now where Dell is not even sending any cards to his graveyard. He's got hares, he's got turtles. Oh. Uh, okay, we're gonna see a solar recharge. There's the mystical space typhoon. Okay. We might, and um, he sends the second mystical space typhoon to the graveyard. Okay, so we're probably about to start seeing um, everything being played here. But less. Uh, Ally Justice is activated. Ally Justice X. I will look that one up after the match uh, in preparation if Dell progresses. Is that, uh, is that enough to make it so that there isn't five? There is most of his deck in the graveyard there. Uh, there's a pop opportunity because he's been cherry-picking the monsters to take out. I think he was doing that so the, the Judgment Dragon could come down. Probably going to be taking a few moments to consider this, but this is going to be a, a very. Now that he's got a window, he knows he has to take it. But we have seen two of those Kaiser Colosseum guys because Dell knew that um, he didn't want to lock himself out of new spells and traps that he drew. And if his opponent takes out the one that he has on field, he's not going to have time to play the second. There he goes, Redox. Here's Redox, and two Eclipse Wyverns going out of play. And two very scary dragons being added. To Dell's hand. Yeah, to Dennis's hand. Den yeah, Dennis's hand, sorry, not Dell. Dell's not adding Light Swan Dragons to his hand. So good in Bujin, though, right? Okay, so we're seeing another card going face down from the Book of Moon. Uh, that was Light Ray the uh, Diablos that was being uh, turned face down by the Book of Moon. That's time on the round for the players in the main, uh, main event downstairs. We've got a bit of extra time up here. We've not been informed how much, but uh, I'm sure we'll get receive some kind of notification. And since we're in single elimination, there's no way this game can end in a draw. One, way, one of these players will progress to the top 16. The other will, unfortunately, fall just short of the final four.
looking at the uh, at Dell's field. Okay, so we're seeing more cars being banished for Tempest. Tempest. Yes. Mystical Space Tafoon being used right now on the FaceTime card. It's another new voice nest. He's probably not in a rush to activate that with so few cards left in his deck. I can't actually see more than one left in his deck. Might be able to see it if we switch view in a moment. Okay, we're going to see a uh, level 7, which is... I'd say it's probably going to be some warning, but... Yep, there comes a solemn warning from Dale. This is a very dangerous turn uh, that Dale needs to get through. It's a lot of patience gone into uh, waiting this long. A lot of players get frustrated and try and f try and force things to happen, and uh, Dennis is now just uh, meticulously taking away all of the answers that Dale has. But Dell spent so many turns crafting the perfect hand. We'll see. Does he have the four light swarm monsters now? You might have been right earlier. He might not actually have enough to uh, to bring out the judgment dragon. To summon the judgment dragon. I would have thought so with uh, most of his deck being in the graveyard. No, he definitely cherry picked that to make sure that that wasn't going to happen. We're seeing a uh, luminous light swarm sorceress being summoned. I believe it's there. Uh, he's he's got a right out, and I believe that gives the fifth. We're seeing a uh, rank three X. He's summoned. Levy a dragon. Levy a dragon. I thought that was very popular when Xyz were first introduced, and we don't see a lot of play with uh, Levio Dragon anymore. I see it in a lot of uh, a lot of extra decks that with when they can get it out. Essentially, obviously, there's no point playing a card you can't actually yeah. play. <laughs> so he's got. I saw two Bajinji turtles, one Bajinji hare. But I would argue. Card. I would argue that it's definitely actually a staple extract card. Possibly. Okay, so he flips up a... He's using the Scrap Dragon to destroy the Raikko and one of his opponent's cards, I think it's the Bujin Yamato. I haven't actually received an update. Yeah, I haven't seen an update. Um, so those cards aren't actually on David's table. Uh, you have just a Bujin Yamato currently in play. Now there's the, uh, the Judgment Dragon. Yep, that one Bujin Yamato stands alone in the face of mighty dragons. Yeah, it's just actually the effect and a hair has stopped it from being destroyed. Yep, then it's paying cards. Paying one would life. say that he's saved paid again. Hair. As we say, he just keeps paying and paying, and, and there's it. a 6 Horizon. That's game. Yep, trying to uh, pull Dennis uh, straight into running out of cards was not a viable plan. Uh, for Dale. Yeah, credit to him spotting an opportunity to win the game through alternative means, but uh, it didn't pay off. As soon as that one window came up, Dennis went for it and he took it. Definitely. Definitely. It is uh, unfortunate that. Uh, you know what? I forgot what I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, it's gone. Okay. Lovely. <laughs> so. Yeah, There's something that, that was unfortunate though, and it was on somebody's side of the field. Uh, somebody played some cards, and uh, maybe if they didn't play that card, they uh, wouldn't have played that card. That's helpful. Yes, <laughs> that tells me that tells me a lot of what you were thinking. Just completely blanked. No, unfortunately we didn't see uh, Bujin Yamato punching everything into the graveyard, as we have seen before. I'm going back into the uh, side deck, so I wonder if Dell learns his lesson here and doesn't try and go for the, the deck out on Light Swans, although that was a very viable way to win the game. Uh, Got it. It was unfortunate that he discarded his Kaiser Coliseum. He didn't want to give up the last spell or trap slot that he had on his field um, to have that second Kaiser Coliseum secured because he didn't have an answer. If his opponent if found a way to get rid of the Raikou, his opponent could have just put for something else through to threaten the whole field. If he got, as soon as he made a Judgment Dragon stick, it was going to go, so he needed to keep more protection cards. 
available to him. Uh, it was a viable Honestly, strategy. But even then, because if you think about it, he uh, he would have bought up the Stuxman Dragon, the thousand would have been paid, but again, it wouldn't enjoy. Mm, I guess, I guess. Yeah, Dennis was just going to be more than happy to go, oh, I'll just pay a thousand life points, protect your guy, pay a thousand life points, protect your guy, pay a thousand life points. I can keep doing this. The Rage of Judgment Dragon. So we're seeing, uh, no, he's sending away the Rainbow Kribo. Bring it back, Dennis. Dennis. I can't, I, he can't hear me. He cannot hear you. If he can't hear me, then we have a serious problem. Yes. I'm, saying, I'm telling him what, what cards are in his hand. Well, that qualifies coaching. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it would. It would, yeah. yeah. Dennis, Rainbow Kribo. What are you doing, mate? What are you doing, my friend? Okay. I trust Dennis. He is very, very close to the final couple of rounds of knockout. Well, he's actually in the final couple of rounds of knockout. Um, why was Yamato destroyed? It's uh, Bajinji hair protected once per turn. No, it just says once during this turn. Ah, you're right, yeah. Once, no, no, once during sense. this turn. No, just during this turn. Right. They're uh, saying they're excited. They both seem in very good spirits. Uh, there, there's a lot riding on this last match. We are going to game three. Um, I don't know when they're entering end of match procedure, but they're uh, shaking hands. A sure sign of sportsmanship from Dennis and Dale. It's it's all going to be over soon. Both fantastic players uh, playing this really well, considering every aspect of this game to maximise their chances of winning. Far from mentioned Tenki first uh, play. I'll just pull up the hands that we're seeing. Uh, unfortunately, there's uh, one card I can't tell you what there, but there's a far from mentioned Tenki played to get the Bujin Yamato. He sets Mystical Space to Foon, and we're going to see the Bujin Yamato effect in the end base. Oh, he already had the y Yamato. No, okay, he's in the end phase, yeah, he's using the Yamato's effect. Sorry, I thought he was using Tenki for Harume, but then... Let's move on. How do you feel about this hand, if you're a Light Swan player? Okay, Charge of the Light Brigade coming down. Um, sending Eclipse Wyvern, uh, Raiden, and Judgment Dragon to the graveyard. Uh, so that's going to add a Lumina Light Swan Sorceress to um, Dennis's hand. And the Eclipse Wyvern is going to activate. That was definitely an Eclipse Wyvern he sent to the graveyard, right? I think it was, yeah. I see missed his... I think he's not noticed. Either mm, that or I don't I'm think it works then. Pretty sure Eclipse Wyvern's mandatory. Maybe, yeah, I must have maybe missed something. Okay, so, uh, Dale's hand. One unknown card. We've just got a Raikou face down from Dennis here. Uh, it's Bujin. Okay, we're seeing a lot more of the first game. Uh, lots of Bujins instead of and just there's the one. There's the three. Okay, he's doing this to test me. Yes, he is. Okay. He knows. He knows that I've been mispronouncing this card's name. You ready? The entire match. Okay, I'm ready. Uh, well, I'm not ready. Okay. Alright. Ready? Bujinki Amaretazu. 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 <laughs> not not Amaretto. <laughs> um, do you want to bring the card up on screen? Yeah, I will do that. There you that. go. Here we go. Amaterasu. Amaterasu. There you go. Bujinki Amaterasu. There you go. Dale, if you watch this later, thanks for that. <laughs> um, okay, we're seeing Bujin Yamato and Bujin G Turtle attacking. There's a Raikou face down on the field. Uh, he's going to flip up and target the spell or trap card Del controls. Uh, it's the Far Formation Tenki, and he'll send top three cards of his deck to the graveyard. Bujin Yamato attacking directly. And he's also attacking with the uh, Amaterasu. Amaterasu. Thank you. <laughs> Bujinki <laughs> Amaterasu. Uh, Dennis has no cards in play, but he does control a lot of cards in his hand. The 
the dreaded Bujin Crane and Bujin Carnation. He's got a plan B should Dell. Dennis. Dell, he's not going to have a plan B for his own play, sorry. Uh, it should Dennis uh, pull a big move out here. He's got, a, he's got his own answer. Uh, it looks like we're seeing a second XE summon. It's uh, Bujin Susanawa. And Again, this uh, this looks pretty one-sided. Yeah, he's sending the Bujinji hair to the graveyard with uh, uh, Bujin T Susano Susanawa. Susano. Susano. Shouldn't play this deck myself. No. Opponents ask me what cards I'm playing. I'll be just giving them the wrong information all day. This one. I'm just making cards up. Yeah. Dennis has a lot of uh, interesting opportunities. Okay, I think uh, end of match procedure is being uh, called here, and so much damage already sitting on Dennis Borgman. He's going to be looking for an explosive turn. This match has to end. There is no draws. One of these guys is going home. Going home out of the top 32. Well, he's not going home. He's probably going to enjoy the rest of the event before. Yeah, before, before he goes he leaves, home. But for all intents and purposes, this is it for one of these guys. And Dennis playing off the back foot here against these uh, monstrous Bujin XE monsters. Uh, Lumina first. Yep, it's. Sorry, I'll give you actual time to read that. Bujinji Crane, Bujinji Incarnation, two Bujin uh, XE, monster, XE monsters, and Dennis does have a Dragon Ruler in his hand, and he's got a Tuner and a non-Tuner. Let's see uh, how he's going to pull this back. He's now got the uh, five Light Swarm. Oh. He got, he fire got the the no, maybe I maybe I didn't see which card that was earlier. Judgment Dragon getting uh, banished for the Eclipse Wyvern effect. Just remind me again, what does uh, Amaterasu do in your opponent's turn? Uh, in your opponent's turn, it lets you target one of your banished level 4 lower monsters out of your hand. Uh, I don't believe Del controls any banished monsters. We've got a Lumina and a Raiden on the field. And it's being turned into one of our most popular giant cards this weekend, Michael the Arch Light Sworn. Michael is very, very, very powerful. Um, you can pay 1,000 life points to banish any card your opponent controls. Uh, then during each of the end of turns, you send top three cards to your graveyard. If Michael will be destroyed, you can send any number of monsters back from your graveyard, uh, life monsters from your graveyard to your deck and gain life points for each one. I don't think he has enough to uh, match the life point deficit that he's got here. Especially with the... Uh Turtles and hares being involved. Yeah, he's not going to be able to target either of those monsters. So, Redox is going to banish two cards, including Eclipse Wyvern, to put a Judgment Dragon back in. Where uh, he is actually uh, now overlaid. He's going for the rank 7. Well, maybe. We'll see. They're all getting a little bit nervous, I think, there. Those cards are flicking very, very fast. Takes a breath. Just relax, Del. You're, you're doing great. Everything's going to be okay. Yeah, see him nodding there. He knows. He knows. Okay, so Mecha Phantom Peace Draco Sack coming down. Was an all star card last year. Still is. No, it's still very, very powerful. I think that was a Bujinji Turtle being used to stop the Mecha Phantom Peace Draco Sack destroying one of those monsters. Here comes Judgment Dragon. 
pays a thousand life points. I'm just going to leave the Drago Sack in play because he currently controls a monster. Okay, so we're going to see a uh, Bujinji Hare being banished. Which card does he protect? This decision could be could be crucial. And he's going to chain the uh, his Bujinki. Yeah, it's it's gone. So now I don't have to keep trying to pronounce its name. <laughs> Amaterasu. Amaterasu. <laughs> he's going to chain the effect so he gets a monster back from his banished zone, and it's going to be Bujinji Turtle. Dennis, 20, 2,600 life points left. The Judgment Dragon. Uh, the Judgment Dragon. There, he could use his effect again. But now that we're in end of max procedure. Uh, yeah, he's going to go for it. He's risking everything on this play. And he, in end of match procedure as well, he can only actually can't really bring him down by that much, surely. Well, he's six thousand four hundred damage he needs to do there. Yeah, it's a lot of damage he needs to do in order to equalise this. But he's not the final turn. He has got uh, he has got more turns to do this. But uh, we know that Dell's holding that Buj incarnation. And how many turns is left? Uh, so after time is called, um, there's three additional turns. So we've got one, two, then three. So he'll have the last turn. I believe so. I'm, okay. drawing, I'm drawing a blank right now. <laughs> uh, we'll find out. View. It's been a it's been a very long time since I've actually uh, played in tournaments. Uh, So, okay, we're going to see two monsters banished, so we're uh, going to see Tempest summoned. Are we going to see an OTK? Maybe, maybe. And if he doesn't, dell has got a chance to finish those last 1,600 life points off. He actually doesn't have any other cards that he can do to this, so this is uh, 5,400 damage coming in. Uh, what's in Dale's hand there? These cards. He actually has the game. Ah, uh, he's got the Bujinji uh, crane. Yeah, and he just drew a hero May. I think that's a rainbow. And, oh, creeper. he's got a Buj incarnation right there. In his opponent's hand. Yeah, it's possible that is a rainbow creeper, which would, which would stop the attack. It would. And that would give game to Dennis. So let's see. Let's see. Pooch Incarnation. No response. He's twitching. They're, he's, they're both nervous. You can just imagine the heart rate of both of these players. Very, very high. Oh, and he's actually summoning. We're so close. I'm assuming this is Susano. Using the effect there. Yep. Yeah, you are correct. If he can get, he's got one face down card actually. I don't know what that face down card is. I think it's a needlebug's nest actually, so that's not going to help Dennis. But he's using it to try and scare his opponent. Doesn't look like it's working. Oh, well, Dale should know if he doesn't go for this, regardless of what that face down card is. He can take an accurate guess at what it is. But if he doesn't do something here, he loses anyway. And in this situation, it's better to go for it and get caught out by the card than not to. Because, you know, it could just be a needlebug nest. Okay, he checks his graveyard. He's going to summon the Bujin Harum. This will give him two monsters, so even if Dennis has the Rainbow Karibo, three monsters. Technically two, it looks like he's going to bring out another Susanna. I can only control one. And then he's going to bring out possibly an honor arc. Honestly, he needs two monsters that he can use the crane, uh, the Bujinji crane on, if he wants to win here. Unless he takes the honor arc. Yes, but the, there's issues with that. The, the He's not going to be able to. It's a diamond dire wolf. Oh no. Ooh. He's so close. Del's not. 
in a great position here. He needs that to not be a Rainbow Karibo. Oh, he's... Yeah, he's got it. He's got he's it. Got it. He's not a Rainbow Karibo. Is it not a Rainbow Karibo, or did he just uh, let that happen? Wow, that was close. That I was feel. very close. Tension. Razor's edge. The tension. Um, of the right plays. there. Uh, to play around the Rainbow Karibo, if he'd have left two monsters in play where he could have used the um, crane on, he attacks the first time, it's unsuccessful. He attacks the second time, he's got the crane, and that Harumi has got more than enough attack points to, to wipe out Dennis's life points. Again, we're seeing superior um, field advantage to Dennis at that point, not winning the game, it was life points. It was amazing. That was that. so close. And Lightsworn progressing to top 16. That's what it's about. Yeah, Just wow. You can, I can imagine you guys all sat there holding your breath, trying to figure out what was going to happen in that game. Bujin, yes, going to top 16, not Lightsworn there. That's right, it's the other way around. Yes, it so is the other way around. Oh, Dale, please, De please Dennis and Dale's stop name playing cards. I uh, can't pronounce. This is, this is Dennis's name and this is Dale's name. and They are not interchangeable. No, they're not. No. Okay. A fantastic play through both of them. Um, Dale being the ultimate winner there, going on to the top 16. Uh, but Dennis shouldn't feel bad about this. He's a fantastic performance with a deck that literally just be playing cards that just became legal for this event. And he makes it all the way to the top 32. Top 32 is a fantastic place to... Yeah, over a thousand players showed up for this. And these are the best players in Europe. We're not just... Uh, these These are really seasoned pros that are attending Definitely. this. Um, that are very regularly traveled. They're competing. And Dennis has beat out almost all of them to get here. So if you're a friend of Dennis, you should pat him on the back when you see him and tell him he did a he did a great job. That was a fantastic duel. So close in the end. Look at you look at the life points there. It was 1600 versus 2600. The Judgment Dragon and the um, the Tempest. Judgment Dragon. The Judgment Dragon. The Judgment Dragon. I know there's multiple Judgment Dragons, but the Judgment Dragon. The Judgment Dragon. That was that was close. It was tense. Wow. Yeah, really I, I'm still feeling a bit tense. Yeah. Thinking about it. Yeah. Just like leaning f forward closer and closer to the screen to see how that was going to Nearly falling conclude. into the screen. And, well, I had one uh, one missing fall, so I thought it was a Rainbow Crebo. It's possible. Um, well, we don't know. I didn't see what that card was. If it was going to be that Rainbow the Crebo, then that would have been it. Yeah. Well, yeah, he would have uh, blocked the attack, and then his opponent didn't have anything else to attack with, and then next turn he would have been able to win the game from there. Yeah, just, again, uh, another thousand life points gone and then just an attack directly yeah we would have been it he would have taken him down anyway top 16 uh i will ask pj if the what deck is still available um yep. jovan may have uh, may have may be progressing uh that would be two uk uk players that i'm aware of that would be entering the top 16 i unfortunately don't have the country breakdown of everyone else everywhere else sorry countries aren't people no they're no, full of not. people, but they are, they are, they are, they are not actually people. people. But they are not actually people. You yeah. have that right. Um, now we are getting given the uh, our warning our, here. Our warning that we have to leave uh, to <laughs> wrap this one up. But guys, I hope you enjoyed that match, and uh, you got you guys can learn a whole lot from uh, both Dale and Dennis. Fantastic players, really great Definitely. effort. And we'll catch up with you soon next round, which will be very soon because we've got not got very many players left to run the rounds over. So stay with us. We'll be back soon.